Well, thanks everybody for coming. Um, the, the title of today's webinar is Leveraging the New Google Analytics for Your Business. So the, the point of today's, uh, we thought we'd take 15, 20, 25 minutes here and go through the new Google Analytics with a goal to um, make sure we talk about how this can be used to help people grow their businesses. So, you know, we, we are going to go through some features and, and the different elements that are inside Google Analytics, but uh, we want to make sure we talk about how we can use this data. So if you've got any questions about what it all means or, or you know, how to make this stuff work for you, please you know, stop us at any point and uh, we'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, yeah, guys, feel free to type your questions in the chat box or into the question and answer section, and we'll um, cover them either during the webinar or after. And um, you also feel free to raise your hand if you have a question, too, on your GoToMeeting dashboard. Okay, so what is Google Analytics? And, and to us, Google Analytics is a tool that allows us to know things about websites and the people who visit them. So a few of the things that we can know are traffic to the site, you know, how many people visit the website, um, who are they? What, what demographically do they look like? Uh, how old are they? What, what, where do they live? That kind of thing. Um, behavior. What do people do when they visit a website? How, how do they move around the site? Um, what brings them there? Traffic sources. You know, is it AdWords? Is it keywords? Is it uh, natural search, referral, direct traffic? Um, and then the different keywords tell us what they're looking for. So in many cases, if we look at keywords, uh, we can tell what kind of services people are after and maybe uh, you know, turn that into something that, that we can then turn into a service that we sell. Um, leads, you know, when they come to a website, do they fill out the form or do they make a phone call? And uh, most recently, uh, there's a big focus on mobile. So one of the things that Google Analytics has recently added is the ability to know whether people access uh, the website on a telephone. Uh, so how do we get to Google Analytics? Um, basically, what happens is you sign into your Google account. And this is a screenshot of Chris Morentis, Showfire Social's uh, Google account. And you'll notice that there's a lot of uh, kind of password information and security at the top. And then down the bottom, in blue, it says visit the previous version of the Google account screen. And that is where uh, the information is that we're looking for. When you do that, you get to this screen, which is the old Google account screen. Um, and over on the left, you'll notice that the second uh, option down is analytics. So we click on analytics there, and that gets us into a place where we can pick which analytics account we want to look at. Now, Surefire's got you know dozens of clients here, so we see a screen that has a lot of different options. Um, generally, if you're managing one website, you'll see one you know, option to click here. And you click on the website and you get to a place called the dashboard. And the dashboard is basically an overview of what's been happening in the last month. So if you look in the top right hand corner, you'll see uh, December 29th to January 28th. So in this case, um, we're looking at the last 30 days beginning yesterday. And we see the traffic that goes across the, the screen on the chart with a couple of peaks and valleys uh, related to when people, you know, when more people might have come or uh, when things might have been happening in the marketplace that drove them to the website or in some cases we might have dropped a direct mail piece that, that might have driven additional traffic. But overall what we're seeing here is that 814 people came to this particular website during that 30 days. Uh, they looked on average at two and a half pages, which is about an industry average, and they stayed for a little under two and a half minutes. Um, and if you look over on the right at the pie chart, you'll see that 77% of the people who come to this site are new, meaning they didn't return during that 30-day period. Um, so it's a, it's a site where people get there based on you know, a particular interest. They see what we've got. They either uh, respond or they move on. Um, the other thing to notice about the Google Accounts screen here is over on the left, you've got all your options. So the navigation through Google Analytics is on this left navigation bar here. Um, there's a very useful uh, tool here for those of you who like to track 
you know, seasonality of different products and, and how things are working over time, where you can take a particular date range. In this case, we've got the December 29th to January 28th date range. And if we just drop down uh, that date there, we can click on compare to past, and it will take a 30-day period, the, the next previous 30-day period, and make a comparison for us. And when we do that, when we press the apply button there, we get a comparison where the previous date range is across the bottom, and then the current date range is in blue. Um, so if something big happens, and you want to kind of see how that impacted your comparison to last month, let's say, or maybe you want to do a year-over-year -year comparison and see, you know, is the SEO that we're doing on these websites um, making an impact or driving additional traffic or making additional people fill out forms, um, we can do that with any date range as long as we go back to time periods when Google Analytics was installed on the site. Um, and what we're seeing on, on this particular screen is um, uh, the result of a, of a video that we, that we had with a client in Miami, Florida that, that actually went viral, where we can see a huge increase in traffic that happened in the middle of January, and we can compare that to the traffic that, that used to be there. So in this case, we had an additional about 3,000 people come to this site in the last 30 days than would come to it on an average 30 days. And you can see the 3658 visitors at the bottom versus 686 uh, the month prior. So that that particular uh, event it allows us to look at some, some pretty interesting data. Um, so when we look at that, you know, generally we would see on search traffic, you know, you see at the bottom there the different kinds of traffic, search traffic, referral traffic, uh, and direct. Search traffic would be traffic that comes from search engines. So, you know, a typical month here is 11% of the total being being search, and, and in most cases that's that would be very low. You would see many more, you know, tens of times that much traffic. Um, as a percentage of the total. But what we've got here is a big referral traffic, 76% referral, and that's generally much lower than that. Uh, the reason is there's a video here that went viral, um, and it's being those referrals are coming from YouTube. And, and in a second, we'll, we'll show you how that, what that looks like on the uh, search engines. Um, and then the direct traffic at 12.3% is the traffic that where people go to a website or go to a, go to a browser and type in the actual website of that company. So that doesn't register as Google traffic, it just registers as, as direct. So when I see something like this, and when we, when we see something like this where something dominates the traffic pattern, we, we want to take a look at it. We want to try to understand um, what's happening. So Google Analytics now allows us to, to look at how people get to the site and what they do when they're there and how they travel through a site. Um, so in, in this particular uh, case, we've got, um, you know, 1.87, 1,870 people who came to the site from the United States. Uh, we've got some from Brazil and from Canada and some different countries. Because this video went viral, normally we would see 100% of the traffic from the United States. They hit the home page. Almost all of these folks are going to the home page. And I'll show you why um, in a few seconds. Um, some of the United States traffic is also going to other places based on there being other ways that they got to the site. So they go to a video learning center or there's a page about waterproofing or, um, you know, some different product pages. Excuse me, I'm going to try to go back here. Yep. And then from there, from the home page, they visit the blog, they visit the photo gallery, they, they visit a video learning center. And there's 28 more pages if we want to click on this. We can see all the different pages they visit and how, how many people go there. So that allows us to, uh, you know, to understand what people are doing within the site and, and what we should give them. So, we, you know, you can see here there's quite a few people that are interested in this blog at 191 visits. It's the most um, visited page on the site. Um, second to that is the project gallery. So obviously people are interested in looking at photos of, of these folks' work. Um, and then from there, 
They're also going back to the home page and back to the project gallery and the video learning center. So these are areas where, based on this data, uh, these clients have put a lot of effort into this website in these areas, put a lot of video on them, uh, spent a lot of time with photos, basically giving the customers what they want, and that helps uh, to get additional leads. Um, goal completions. In, in this, goal completions is leads. So in this particular case, this is form submissions only. This does not count phone calls. Um, but lead flow for, the, for that month of, of uh, January is 19 versus 13 the prior month. Um, so you can see a pretty big you know, bump uh, as the, the year goes around. And generally, what happens on these sites is two-thirds of the leads are phone calls. So we're not tracking phone calls, but you, you take the, the, the form submissions and multiply by two, and you're at about 60 leads a month on, on a website like this versus uh, the prior month, which was Christmas holiday, um, at about you know, two-thirds of that. So you know, those are kind of the, the top view um, analytics of how we, how we can look at these sites. And, and we can compare traffic. We can look at you know, what happened when this video here went viral. And we see you know, 3,600 visits. Um, and they don't, vis they don't view as many pages because they're not there because they were looking for anything in particular. They kind of came there from the video, and they spend a lot less time, um, and they bounce more. But they came. You know, we got an additional very big bump in traffic versus what the normal would be, where people spend a lot more time, they bounce a lot less, and they, they fill out forms at a higher rate. Then we can see here how they, how, again, how they got to us. Here's your big YouTube bump when this video goes viral, right? 1,900 visits versus a typical month of YouTube is 13. So they're, they're coming um, in, in waves. Uh, they also, there was a, we, we duplicated this video on Facebook. So there was a very large increase in Facebook traffic. Um, and then some pretty typical increases here in direct traffic and Google Organic that look more like seasonal differences where, you know, you're coming out of December and getting into January and the natural traffic would increase, but certainly not what you see here in, in YouTube. Um, that's, a, that's an aberration. Um, and there are a couple of things that are new in Google Analytics here. Um, and we'll show you in a second. Dashboards. Um, we're tracking now social media people, whether they're engaged in social media and um, how that interacts with the site. And we're also able to look real time at uh, how you know, how many people are in a site and what they're doing. So that, that's a brand new feature of Google Analytics that didn't used to be there. So I'm going to just pull this aside. Hey, Bob, we have a quick, a couple questions. Can sure. we sure. shoot them at you? Okay. So um, people have, one of our listeners um, noticed that they've read something about uh, that the new Google Analytics puts um, some weight on the measurement of your site's speed, how fast it loads when people arrive on there. Yes. Um, is this true? And if it is, how is it going to affect our clients and everyone else's analytics? Well, it's, it's important that a site be hosted properly in a place where, where it can uh, you know, be fast, basically. They're, they're looking at, at how, how sites uh, sit on the Internet and how easily they are accessed. And part of the algorithm now is to make sure that, that uh, sites that are on uh, fast servers are rewarded. So there's a measurement inside the content area here called site speed. Um, it's not been deployed 100% um, in all uh, websites. So it's, it's here, but it's not here yet. It's, just, it's a brand new uh, element. But um, it's definitely part of how uh, Google is looking at websites. I would also just add to that that it's not awesome. just the server you're on, but also oh, the, every, uh, oh, everyone. This is Chris Morentes on right now, our founder and CEO and president speaking. Sorry, so hey, I just want to introduce him. Go ahead. Thanks, thanks, Alyssa. You, um, it's not just the server you're on, but also the way your site is built and the um, code on it and different things you could do. We test all the different sites that we launch. So if all you know, all you folks should be on sites that we built or 
or at least modified. So we do testing to make sure that we're within certain boundaries to not flag the algorithms in a negative way about sites that we build. Um, so that's that's a you know it's not just the the server, but you also uh, want to make sure that it's also the the uh, the way your website is built and the code in that website. Yeah. So I wanted to show you some particular data that was that was really interesting and in how that uh, how that looks on analytics. So if we go back to November first, um, actually I'm going to go back to December first. Through the through today, and I can compare the past and apply. All right, and this is this is uh, IstawetaRoofing.com, a client of ours in Miami, Florida, who's graciously allowed us to use their data, and and we can see that that there's a, just a huge spike that happened um, a couple of weeks ago, and so beginning January twentieth. You know, we go from 83 visits a day to 338 visits to 588 to 635, just huge spikes in traffic here. And it's coming down now, but it's still, it's still a very active uh, thing. And what happened was they uh, had a video here. They, they, they were doing a roof in Miami and uh, found a, a, about 100,000 bats underneath the roof. And as they tore off the... Uh, video, or you know, as they tore off the, the tiles from the roof, they took video of it and posted it to YouTube. And, and these bats are everywhere. Right? So they took a they took a video of, of this and posted it to YouTube, and we put it out on Facebook. And it was not a, you know, we didn't spend a lot of time on this and just kind of let it go and see what happened. And if you look down here, you can see there's been a million views of this video up until um, right now, a million one hundred thousand views. And you'll also notice in the description that we link that to the website. All right, istoetaroofing.com is the is the website of this company. So people who who see this can then come and visit the website. And what we're finding is that huge numbers of them are coming here and they're they're hanging around and looking around at the website. Um, the client's gotten a lot of great feedback. He, he ended up uh, being interviewed by the news. There was, was a lot of commotion over this video when it finally did go viral. It, it, it had been on, on YouTube since last July and really didn't get any activity at all until it landed on the right website. And all of a sudden, um, you know, it, it, it went up pretty strong. So when we look at traffic sources, again, um, just to, to kind of add, add to that, there's two really important things that happen. This is why we, we talk to um, you folks and the coaches work with you guys on trying to get kind of layers of content, you know, including you know, articles and blog posts and, you know, and video and pictures using panoramio is that you have like multiple sort of shots on goals, what we call it. But two things happen with this video. Number one, because it's getting distributed in all these different places, not just YouTube, but people grabbing it and putting on their own blogs or putting on their own websites or their own um, you know, social media sites, it's literally creating thousands of very high quality link backs through the link Bob just showed you into their website. So they're getting really, really good high quality links. They dominate. Um, search engines now in Miami. They've been already doing a really good job with all the work we were doing normally, but now they're just extending the number of really good high quality leaks because this video went viral. Now that's kind of like catching lightning in a bottle, right? But Bob, working with the client in this case, created you know, systems and processes in their company. So they've got over 60 videos at this point. And you know, what they've done is they've incorporated this as part of their, their daily workflow. So their workmen had a heads up to take a video there and then bring it back and give it to the folks internally and distribute it. And then Bob helped them kind of organize it and, and distribute it in lots of different places in their digital footprint. You know, and that's why this happens. The second thing, and Bob, you know, just mentioned it, is, you know, this ended up getting on the front page of Huffington Post. Um, uh, and MSNBC, I think, uh, featured it on their website. Um, they were interviewed by the local news. So they're getting a ton of free publicity. And guess what happens? Next time 
you know, a hurricane goes through Miami, you know, who do you think the media is going to call to get an interview about what to do about your broken roofs? It's going to be Frank Estuetta, and he's going to clean up. So he's becoming the authority in the market through this video as well. So two really important things happen, and the idea is being just consistent and persistent and creating workflow around these ideas of different media and social media that you distribute into the into the into the marketplace. And and we can see as they as they come here to the to the home page, you know, the big increase in traffic to the home page from seventeen fifty to forty eight hundred, but we can also see uh, big increases, you know, doubling of increases in visits to the project gallery, to the blog. The blog has tripled the traffic that it had before, testimonial pages, video learning centers. So people are coming and they're and they're looking around. And, and checking out this company. So it's been a, a very interesting, just in the last couple of weeks, as this all developed, an interesting um, impact of, of all of this social media that's, that's taken off. So, you know, it's not a normal circumstance where you get a video that, that goes viral like this, but uh, certainly it's, an, it's uh, a good thing when it happens. So there... As I said, there are some there are some new elements to Google Analytics that make things uh, a lot easier to look at. Uh, this is one of them, the dashboard, where we can actually create different dashboards and and different ways to look at data based on what we like to see. Um, different kinds of reports, we can change the order of them, move them around, um, make different ones. And and one of the ones I like in particular is over here. If you look at conversion rate by source, you can see that that you can track conversions, meaning form submissions, back to Google, Google search. We can also see that, that there were a couple from YouTube and uh, an actual lead from Facebook. So we're, we're going back. We're able to uh, use this data and, and see that some of the stuff is, is actually resulting in leads. Um, we can also have multiple dashboards. So in, in analytics, you can create your own dashboard here. and change these reports. So you might have one look that you like, you know, on, to look at it one way, and then another one that you like to, to see things differently. Um, and real time. This is the first time this has been available, but this actually tells us who is on the website right now. Um, so we've got two visitors on the site, um, and then how many pages per minute they're looking at, uh, what, what pages are active. Um, in this case, it's the home page, um, and how they got there, Facebook and YouTube. So they're, they're just, they keep making this thing better and keep giving us more and more information. Um, what's, what's unbelievable about that, Bob, in my opinion, you know, and this is probably not all the time, but, you know, people wonder, well, how valuable is social media to my business? Right. You know, we're just looking at this thing real time, just sort of, you know, kind of plopping into this thing, then we see Facebook and YouTube are two of the people that are on the site right now. In the last chart you showed, you saw that YouTube had two lead conversions. That doesn't include phone calls, by the way, as you, you mentioned earlier. That's just form fills. And Facebook was one. So, you know, these layers of social media not only get you great links back and traffic back to your site, but it's actually really valuable users. I think it's, and you know, what's great about Google Analytics today, which, which hopefully you guys are getting the, the point from this presentation Bob's giving you, is that, you know, it's really fun when you start to see you do things, and then you can see the results of those things in Google Analytics, and your coaches are going to work with you guys now in, in uh, kind of tying more closely the work we do together with, you know, kind of real, real kind of ROI on those results using Google Analytics. Let me just make one more comment about this particular client and how we've used video, because uh, they've done just a tremendous job. Um, there are 89 videos on this client's YouTube account, and probably two-thirds of them are testimonials, customers saying that they, that they like the, the product, and then another third are um, here's how we do things kind of videos, video uh, learning. And we created a learning center on the website, and we created um, a video testimonial center where customers can go, visitors can go to the, on the website and see 
you know, friends and neighbors who had work done and, and, you know, get that social proof. And they can also learn a little bit about how the company does the, does the installation and, and what they, you know, what they actually do. And they hear a lot from customers that that is valuable in helping them make a decision, um, which makes a lot of sense. Um, what we also see is that when we optimize these videos and we put descriptions in them that are keyword related and that are geo-targeted and, and we, we kind of optimize each individual video with a purpose, that we see the, the rankings of this customer's um, position in the search engine improve. So we, Ariel Estueta and I actually look at this data and make changes to the things that we're doing in these videos based on where we are and where we'd like to be and where we see the activity. So I, I would encourage anybody who, you know, really wants to hit a home run with this stuff, get serious with the YouTube and, and the Facebook and all of that and, and use it as if, you know, use it with a purpose. And when you do that and, and read the data the way we've been doing here for the last half hour or so, um, it, it tends to, to have the answers come out at you and you can actually drive this bus. It's not just to find out what happened in the past, it's actually you can you can use it to make a roadmap for the future. So were there any other questions? Yeah, we do actually have a couple more questions, Bob. Um, if you could go back to the Google Analytics dashboard for one second. All right, so we have a question um, that was talking about the traffic flow, um, the different where the um, the different types of traffic are coming from, and um, the visits and drop offs. Okay. So what what is a drop off? What constitutes somebody dropping off? Does that mean they exited the page, or they closed the page after visiting the home page? What does that mean? And can you kind of go elaborate a little more on some things like well, bounce rate and what a good average time on a page is. Well, an, a an average um, an average visit to this website is two and a half pages. So they view the home page and a couple other pages. They they find the contact form or uh, make a phone call, and they leave. So they're they're spending some time on on a few specific pages. They're not looking at thirty pages. Um, so things like the video testimonial center, you know, video testimonial page. They may be on that page for a half an hour and look at five videos, but that's one page, you know, one page view. Um, bounce rate. And, and, you know, bounce rate is, is a little misleading, but we see bounce rate that goes anywhere between 40 and 50 percent generally. And, and bounce rate means they landed on the home page and they didn't look at another page. Um, and generally you would say that we'd like them to look at more pages. Uh, the, the misleading piece of that is we actually build home pages now to generate response on the first visit. So we, we put contact mechanisms like um, form submission, you know, forms on the, on the top right and phone numbers so that people don't have to go searching on three pages in order to find out how to get a hold of us. They, they can do that on any page they land on. So that tends to drive bounce rate up and average pages visited down. Um, so we see, you know, the, the good websites, the, the, the really good ones are under 50% in bounce rate. Um, in this particular case, what you're seeing is a bounce rate that goes up to 70 because a lot of these folks, you know, landed on this page by viewing the video. Um, they weren't out there surfing for roofing products. They were, you know, casual visitors, if you will. Um, so we got a lot of extra traffic and we got a couple leads out of it and, and a lot of other secondary benefit. And then, uh, you know, you see the bounce rate drive up a little bit and then that will come back to normal as the impact of the video subsides. Does that answer the question? Yeah, Bob, yes, that I was think, a great answer, Bob. Thank you. Um, do, do you think they ahead. wanted to go back to the traffic flow screen to go to that, or? Yep. Hmm, where is that, Chris? I forget which. <laughs> It was on your pres. Was it on your? It was on your presentation. Yeah, let me grab that. It's a nice New England scene there, Bob. 
Yeah, nice in the summer. It's, uh, I think that's Maine. There you go. Okay. So you see what the starting page is? 366K visits, 279K drop-offs. So that, that what that means is option. people who drop, now that relates to bounce rate. So of the 366K visits, um, 279K dropped off, and you saw that was about a 70% bounce rate in the previous chart Bob was showing you. And so what that means is people dropped off and didn't go to one of these other pages. Now, that ordinarily we would consider to be pretty high. We wouldn't, you know, that, that, that's, that we'd say if, if that was happening on an average basis month to month, we, you know, we think there's something on the site that we're not bringing people in and appealing to people. But what's going on here is it's reflecting that video that went viral. So there is a lot of people who are coming just out of curiosity and then leaving after the first site. But I think one of the big points Bob was making is, and you could see it in the number of leads chart he had, uh, I forget if it was within this presentation or when we were going through the, the live analytics, but the number of leads has gone up. Uh, you know, leads here are not meaning phone calls, just form fills from, I think, 13 to 19. From month About a 50% so, increase, right? Yeah. So, so even though you know um, a lot of the traffic is, isn't you know I mean, it could be people from any state in the country they they're not going to hire you know a Miami roofer if they live in Alaska or or you know or uh, you know New York or or wherever but they but but uh, but a lot of the traffic is you know is you know is quality traffic and is getting them more leads and as I mentioned earlier you know the two real big benefits of that is you know even though it's getting distribution in places that they can't they can't necessarily do business in the you know with with a you know a blog or a or a Facebook page or a, or or or, or media you know, Huffington Post for example you know um, what it does do though is give them really good quality links back that the search engines say wow this site must be a more important site than any other roofing site in Miami and those links don't go away they stay there. So the, to answer the question is drop-offs are people who dropped off after that home page, um, and, and that ordinarily would be very high. Um, you know, and, that's, and that would be reflected in another number you saw here in terms of bounce rate. Any other questions? So Bob, really quick, if we have somebody who goes through and fills out a form maybe for a newsletter on your home page, um, is when they fill out the form and submit it and end up on a thank you page, that's not a bounce, correct? That's a, a conversion. Correct. Okay. Just wanted to verify. Yep. Okay. So if anyone, um, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to type them in to the, um, the question area. If you don't, um, then uh, I think we'll probably start to wrap things up. If you have any questions later on, feel free to email myself, Alyssa at SurefireSocial.com or Bob. Um, or your Surefire Social Coach, and um, feel free to ask us anything about uh, this new platform and how you guys can use it and uh, with all the new upgrades. It's really cool. I've played with it myself, and um, it's really neat to kind of play around, uh, play around with and see where people are coming from. Yeah, and the thing is, is work with your coach on setting up, as Bob showed you, you could customize a dashboard you know, to create real meaningful numbers that you could understand and um, work with your coach to make sure that you've got a dashboard that you can go to every day if you want or every week um, that you know as you as you, you know, kind of go through as you go through with your coach every week or every every, you know, every couple times a month you'll start to get used to it and start to be able to see have a pulse on your business so that that's the key is it, it's, it's great data here that that creates predictability in your business and you can see trends in your business that can be very valuable for you All right, great. So, Bob, do you have any any other last thoughts? No, just thank you very much for coming, and uh, feel free to send us any questions if you have any after the after the the uh, webinar is over.